are doing well today's video is going to be uh, on me building a chalky uh, now this was a subscriber request and i had no idea what a chalky was so the subscriber was very kind enough to tell me explain to me what a chalky is um, and i well i realized that i had a chalky all this while i just didn't know that it was called a chalky uh, so it's basically a deity pedestal it's like a small small short table you can say a mini one uh, meant for uh, either um, placing diyas or uh, a deity an idol uh, the one that i'm building is about 3 and a half by 3 and a half inches uh, post firing i mean that's after the shrinkage and all that uh, with four really tiny uh, legs so that's what i'm going to do so something like this is going to be appropriate for smaller spaces and uh, now in my in my previous videos uh, of whatever i've uploaded so far uh, the process i think most of you know that i get my pieces fired in an electric kiln so all of that is going to be the same even for this particular one i'm going to let it dry for a few days in fact because this is a slightly thicker piece because the legs are uh, might take a little uh, the legs are a little bit thicker so i i i left it for at least about 5 to 6 days for this piece to dry uh it may not take that long but uh, it will still require some time to dry so i let it dry and then i got it bisque fired at kono 6 uh, now kono 6 over here is about 999 degrees centigrade uh so that's what i uh, that's what typically happens with all of my pieces i am using the same clay as well i'm using uh, i'm using a uh, uh, the laguna em 106 uh, for making this as well now the difference in this particular piece is i'm not going to be using acrylic paints i'm going to be using under glazes and glaze uh, and a clear glaze to uh, paint this particular one now in my previous videos especially my terracotta jewelry making videos what you must have observed is that after i fire it i paint using acrylic paints this one i'm going to be using under glazes and glazes i i think uh, i think a lot of you have expressed some amount of interest uh, in in this particular process uh, but i highly suggest that you learn this from a professional i am very new to this topic so even if you ask me questions i may not be able to give you uh, answers like you know uh, where did you buy the product and etc etc uh, especially i can i can probably share links of where i bought the product here uh but i may not be able to share the links uh, in india because i only started glazing after i came here um so yeah but i would i would really suggest that you um go through at least one professional uh session or a class um as such so that you have an idea of what exactly uh, happens but i am making this part of the video to give you a bit of an introduction on um what i'm going to be doing so uh, let's begin with that so with regard to the process i make the piece i let it dry for about 5 uh, to 6 days based on how uh, you know how warm the weather is it might even dry quicker so i just live in a really cold place i mean it's it's winter so uh, it's weather is really bad here so mine just takes a little longer to dry um after it dries it's fired in an electric kiln i bring it back home i under glaze it and i put a clear glaze on top of it i take it back for firing and my bisque firing my bisque firing is nothing but my first firing uh, happens at 999 degree centigrade which is cone 06 cone 06 basically uh, and once i have okay let me let, let me just repeat that because i i kind of lost my uh, uh, train of thought uh, so i make it i let it dry i uh, take my pieces for bisque firing bisque firing over here happens at cone 06 remember that cone 06 and cone 6 are two very very different temperatures they are not the same after i after the bisque firing happens i bring the pieces back i under glaze it and after the under glazes are done i do about 3 coats uh, of each so 3 coats of under glazes and then after the under glazes have dried i apply a clear glaze on top of it and then i take it back for firing i take it back for firing and this time i get it fired at a slightly higher temperature uh, so for me i have to get my pieces fired at cone 04 
Cone zero four is typically thousand sixty degrees centigrade. Now I get that fire. So it's gone through two firings for me to complete this chalky. Now this chalky did have a few problems. I will show that to you in the video. Um, so what happened is I had to take it back again for a third firing, again at cone cone uh, zero four. Now I have some pieces that I glazed over here. Although the clay that I'm using for this is a mid range body, it's not the same clay that I'm using for my um, for my jewelry. Now for jewelry, I'm using a uh, low fire clay. This is a mid fire clay, so it obviously fires at a slightly higher temperature than the other clay. Now this one has this kind of a body. Now I'm not sure if you can see it. Can you see? It's kind of this one's called speckled buff, and it's it's got this it's got these speckles. It's a beautiful clay. I really like it. It's rough. It's a bit rough uh, when compared to uh, the one that we use for jewelry. So you see that. So this is a glazed piece. So this one's um, this one's basically dishwasher friendly, and I can put this in the oven, and uh, you know. So yeah. So this is basically something which is food safe. I made a couple of mugs as well. I think if you follow my Instagram page, you've probably already seen all of these. So I made these little espresso mugs. Now, one thing that I, I do want to explain is that if you see on this, the foot is exposed. Now, this is basically the foot. The foot is exposed. Uh, the reason why the foot is exposed is because if I apply glaze on this and fire it, this is going to attach itself to the kiln shelf, and I won't be able to remove it out. So it is very necessary that I actually expo expose this, and when I say expose it, basically, um, you know, I haven't applied any amount of uh, glaze or anything on top of this. So yeah, so this is also you do get matte and you get uh, uh, you know like really glossy glazes. Uh, so I have used uh, you know a, a glossy one on this. Now uh, let me show you where I had a little issue. So this is the mug which had an issue, and I'm not sure if you can see, but it had after the firing, I ended up having bubbles like this all over the mug, and this was actually my favorite one in the one that I did. Um, unfortunately, it didn't work out, and uh, I have never seen something like this before, this kind of a problem. Uh, but when I uh, when I asked some more experienced uh, some experienced people over there, they said. two things one maybe i could fire this at a slightly higher temperature by the way uh, like i said this is a mid range body clay so i actually get this fired at cone 5 not 05 cone 5 cone 5 is basically 1196 degrees centigrade now i actually wrote down the centigrade because over here uh it's more the firing temperatures you just say it as cone 06 cone 04 cone 0 it's like that so it's 06 04 03 02 1 2 3 4 that's how it goes so which is why i say you cannot interchange uh, 06 and 6 it's not the same it's not the same so you can't use that in the same uh thing so yeah so i basically fired this at a cone 5 and the suggestion that i got was basically for me to apply a thicker coat of this glaze this particular glaze and again get it refired at a slightly higher temperature which is cone 6 now cone 6 is 1222 degrees centigrade um and i haven't tried it yet i need to try this one uh but yeah i think you know when i do glaze it though again uh what is going to happen is all this work that i have done is going to go um so yeah that's a bit of a disappointment because i really like this kind of work i just did this with a brush and um yeah so that's the thing so anyways this 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 is just a very very teeny tiny little part uh of this topic and uh, obviously in the video you will get to see um uh, you'll get to see what i've actually done this topic is not something that i can wrap up in in one and i don't intend to make too many videos on this particular topic now i'll tell you the reason is obviously because i don't i don't think i am qualified enough to um 
share information on this and uh, because i'm still in that learning phase so i'm pretty sure a lot of you will have questions on uh you know because there is a good chance that you know the first time you try out something like this it may not come as you expected you might end up getting some some of these things don't even some of these things don't even fire well and you're like okay what what did i do wrong you know and you're kind of disappointed because it's very natural to get attached to some of the pieces that you make and after you do all that hard work you realize that these glazes have not fired well um there's nothing much that you can do with the pieces so that that's what so i actually um you'll see that i actually had a bit of a flop in one of the pieces that i made uh, i'll show that to you in the video and uh, i think i've i've covered it pretty much i think i've covered it so i'll just tell you again uh, just to give you a bit of a repetition on this this is basically a mid mid range uh, clay so this one i think this gives you a better idea of it this one's a it's a lighter one it's obviously it's a little rougher but it's apt for me for throwing on the wheel i make all this on the wheel and uh, this one basically fires at uh, rather the clay matures at 5 uh, cone 5 but i think next time what i'm going to do is probably fire the glazes at cone 6 with regard to the clay that i'm going to be using for the chowki i am going to be uh, firing that at bisque firing it bisque firing that at cone 06 and glaze firing that at cone 04 i do not know if i've actually done a good job explaining this or have i just confused you all a lot more uh, but like i said um, you know this is a topic which might probably require some dedicated amount of learning so you might want to actually approach um, a proper ceramic instructor and uh, learn this i mean there are there are several places which actually teach glaze uh, formulation so i actually use ready made glazes i don't make my own glazes i uh, just buy them ready made and i uh, you know paint them but there are a lot of people who make their own glazes so typically a glaze uh, at least of what i have understood and what i have read uh, consists of silica alumina a colorant and a flux so these are the four things that i think are the main components of a glaze uh and obviously when they reach a certain temperature they melt down and they fuse uh you know they vitrify i think that's the right term they vitrify and they become a glass like uh structure it's a very similar it's in fact the same technique that is uh done on your uh well on your mugs your bowls your cups whatever that you use at home as well as your um you know your food related uh, your dinnerware basically oh my god i am at such a loss of words <laughs> so i think I've, i've i think i've spoken quite a bit and uh, let's just get on to the video i will give a brief narration uh, you know during the video as well so i hope you don't get completely confused or lost in the whole topic uh, so i really hope you all enjoy the video do let me know what you think of the video in the comments so let's begin with a slab a slab of 0.6 cm in thickness This is obviously a slightly bigger slab. I smoothen the slab using my fettling knife. And now with the help of a scale, a, ru a ruler, I'm just cutting out the shape using my X-Acto knife. So I have a perfect square over here. Just smoothing the edges using a little bit of oil. drawing margins around the uh, along the edges uh using my uh, exact sorry using my fettling knife i'm drawing the zigzag design along the borders using a square shaped cookie cutter just getting the shape once again um you know because it's a flat slab you can be really creative with it i'm 
using uh, just a pen cap over here drawing a couple of circles adding a couple of details with a ballpoint pen refill now for the uh, legs basically of the um, of the chalky i'm using a a jhumka mold cutting out the shape cutting i'm going to be using i, I obviously need four such pieces i make each of them into a nice round ball I just hit it down gently just to create a flat top and a base. It just helps with um, keeping it a little bit more stable and sturdy. Now I score both uh, the leg as well as the uh, the surface. I score it really well. This is just a scratcher tool what I'm using. I apply a little bit of slip. What I'm doing here is basically trying to work the slip in, making sure that these actually attach themselves really well. I give it a gentle press and then I begin attaching the uh, four legs to the piece. It's just a silicone tip brush to smoothen it out. There you go. The chalky is ready. Now, one thing that um, you must keep in mind over here is uh, with regard to drying. This does have a tendency to warp, so it's best that it's covered with a plastic cover or a plastic bag. In this manner, make sure it's covered well. And what I'm also doing is basically keeping a weight. This is not very heavy and it's not going to deform the piece. That way the piece basically dries completely straight without having any kind of a warping or um, any kind of a wobble. So I let it dry for a few days and then it's fired in an electric kiln at Kono 6. And now that you see the piece is ready, it's got a beautiful, nice uh, color. Now I made a couple of them uh, like this. If you see, I just used a, a stamp on this one. I have laid out all the materials. Um, a fan brush is something that um, is, is very helpful, especially while glazing. I have a palette, a clean palette. These are my under glazes. Usually most of them come with uh, pretty clear instructions on the, uh, on the bottle. So if you see this one, it can be applied on clay, on, gr on uh, greenware. And uh, basically I'm applying this on bisqueware because mine's already fired and uh, you see that um, firing temperatures have been written now these are um, these are stroke and coat uh, wonder glaze uh, this is this the good part about this is that it doesn't require a clear coat it basically when it's fired it fires glossy uh, it doesn't require another extra coat of uh, clear glaze on top of it I usually get like smaller bottles like this, uh, but for the white and the wine uh, color, I just picked up uh, slightly bigger ones. Now this one's a clear, uh, the clear coat, uh, which will go on. You'll see how I'm going to be using this. Like I said, uh, most of these come with very clear instructions, uh, but again, you will have to test it out and see for yourself as to what temperature suits uh, your work the best. So if you see, um, you know, so by the way, that's one of the things that you'll see me do before using any glaze, any under glaze. I make sure it's, it. I shake it really well and everything has to be three coats. Uh, that's a standard rule that I maintain and I let each coat dry before I apply the next one. 
So the first thing is basically I wipe the uh, pieces, the bisque fired pieces with a little bit of uh, water, just making sure there is no dust or anything of that sort on it. Because if there is, uh, then there is a good chance that the glaze might not actually stick to uh, the piece. So now this is an under glaze. I'm using my fan brush, making sure I shake the bottle really well and apply three coats on this particular piece. And usually the one the one thing uh, that we uh, rather I've seen with under glazes is that what you see is what you get. So if it's white, you typically get it. Uh, you it looks white. It doesn't change that much or anything of that sort. With the help of a sponge and some water, I'm just wiping off the excess. Uh, under glaze and you'll slowly see that this method would help reveal the entire design out in a very nice way under glazes are basically a combination of clay and water and uh, obviously the pigment the color pigment so which is why it is easier to wipe it off and you see that slowly the color is starting to um, rather the designs are starting to show up really beautiful so if you see, it's it's looking absolutely beautiful. I've also done that uh, to the foot part where I've actually uh, printed the name on, rather stamped my name on. Basically, I just put it and I just wiped it. So I did the same thing what I did on the surface. Now I'm using this uh, stroken coat and uh, this is where I actually uh, end up doing the mistake. I should have ideally just put a clear uh, glaze on top of it but unfortunately, I think when I was doing it, I completely forgot that this would give complete coverage. Uh, so unfortunately, what happens is that the entire thing um, becomes this wine color. And that's not what I intended. I was somehow thinking that it might give me a lighter wine color and probably the white would come through in a slightly faded manner but unfortunately that's uh, not what happened and uh, you'll see that this piece is the one which actually uh, well got messed up <laughs> but yeah at least um, well I learned now I am wiping the base rather the foot very very necessary step um, I think in the beginning rather than the introduction as well I did mention as to why leaving the foot uh, unglazed is important uh, because if I just leave it as it is with the glaze on there is a good chance that um, it would attach itself to the kiln and I will not be able to remove it very easily so, now if you see this piece is completely dried it looks chalky it looks rough but you'll see the magic once the firing happens um, so this is it with this piece now obviously with the one that we sh uh, that I made the video on I'm going to be repeating the same thing, applying the underglaze first, the white uh, underglaze, applying a generous coat everywhere using my fan brush. Every every uh, design. The, the thing is, I basically need a white uh, outline, so which is why I'm going to be uh, repeating the same process of wiping the excess glaze uh, from the surface as well. I'm doing the base of the chalky and once it all dries I just wipe it so this way you know the design just gets revealed once again a really soft sponge I wipe it down again wash the sponge wipe it down again wash the sponge I make sure I remove the excess see that I mean this is looking beautiful just as it is actually but yeah I think I wanted to add some color to this I'm going to be adding green I'm going to be adding red and yellow these are all under glazes I just name it uh, on the top so that it's easier for me to uh, recognize the bottle I use my liner brush for this particular one 
it's very similar to painting it's just that it requires uh, three coats so because a single coat would not give you that kind of color and intensity it would end up becoming too light or it may not even look very good Now using a transparent, rather a, a clear glaze, give it a good shake and then I apply three coats. Now I've already put the first coat on. Now one thing, the difference between this one and the other one is this one obviously had the uh, stroke and coat and this one does not require a clear glaze because this already uh, fires to a glossy finish. I go on with my next coat. Neat, smooth coat making sure I get the sides, the base, everything. Obviously for this as well, most importantly, I have to wipe off the base. If you see, I have it all ready. This is how the piece looks. You see that it's really chalky and uh, matte. have finally got my pieces uh, fired so if you see uh, you know both these pieces look absolutely beautiful I'm quite happy with the way this is turned out although there are a bunch of issues and I'll get to that I'll, I'll get to that this one um, kind of flopped actually because what I was going for was the white to be um, you know seen in a more faded manner but it looks like it's totally uh, you know I think I just um, I just messed it up. I, I forgot that I was actually putting a glaze which would totally cover the entire white up completely. I should have ideally just gone for a clear glaze and just applied it so that um, the white and brown would be seen like this. You know, the clay color and the, um, you know, the white would be seen like this in this particular design. But it didn't work out. It happens. I mean, <laughs> I'll probably remember that the next time. It's fired well, uh, but, um, you know, just that it didn't work as expected. So, yeah, that's, uh, that's, I, I really wouldn't do anything to this one. I'd probably just leave it as it is and uh, I might just use it for some other purpose, um, you know, at home. Yeah. But these two pieces uh, look pretty nice. I like the way the colors are very beautiful, very intense, got a nice, uh, you know, glassy kind of a appearance. It's glassy, glossy, everything. <laughs> so yeah, um, there are a couple of issues with both the pieces though. There are, uh, there are basically a couple of pinholes along the sides over here. Not sure if you can actually see it. So both of these pieces will have to go into firing again. Um, Again, I'll probably do it at Kono 4 and uh, see if that helps. Uh, ideally, it should uh, because both of them do tend to have it on the sides over here. So, but apart from that, I'm quite happy with the way these have turned out. If you see, you know, the places where it's wiped, why it is necessary. Because if I had glaze on this, this piece would have probably gotten fused to the kiln shelf and uh, well that would have been pretty disappointing because once it fixes itself it's very difficult to actually uh, you know remove it uh, so yeah i think um, quite happy with this actually I, I really like the color combination green yellow i think it it always works well um, and so is so is this one this is like um, this is just this is just a favorite of mine i really like this um, i like the pattern uh, I did not use any kind of, uh, you know, scales or measurement or anything of that sort. I just, that's, which is, which is precisely why you'll see that it's quite imperfect. Uh, but I, I kind of, um, I actually love that it's imperfect because it's got a very hand-drawn feel to it. And I was not intending to do this much amount of detailing to the piece, but I'm glad I did. Um, because, you know, I, I'm pretty happy with the way this looks. It's got a very traditional, nice appearance. Um, so yeah, just that, you know, I'll probably have to give it for refiring again and uh, hopefully that should uh, tackle the issues that um, this one currently has. So, yep. So I'll probably give this for refiring and we'll see how this turns out. Hello. 
So today I actually got back from my uh, second glaze firing. So if you remember, I actually mentioned that I would be taking these pieces again for a second round of glaze firing. So actually these pieces have gone through three firings now and I'm finally, I mean, you know, very, very happy with the results that I'm seeing right now. I'll just show this to you. They look beautiful. The colors have, you know, you can see how lovely the colors look. It just takes on the, you know, it's beautiful, glossy, and I'll just show this to you in a bit. How gorgeous does that look? Beautiful, it's, it's I mean, the color combination is lovely. It's, it's got this nice, lovely gloss. Sorry that the camera is going out of focus, but yeah. And I'm, I'm actually happy that it corrected. The second glaze firing actually corrected, uh, you know, the pinholes and all that. Let me show you the other one. It's been a pretty well, it's been a pretty cold week so yeah this is the other one I don't know if you can see this very clearly but yeah I think now you should be able to see it see that it's, I, I love this one this is like my favorite because I really like um, you know doing this kind of freestyle work <laughs> Do let me know what you think of the video in the comment section and as always I'll get back to each and every one of you. Thank you so much for your time and thank you so much for watching.